Welcome to today's special episode of Cascading Leadership. I am your friendly neighborhood talent strategy nerd, Dr. Jim, and we are doing a special episode that is focused on some of the challenges that job seekers might be facing in the course of transitioning careers or positions. And today we are joined by our special guest who is going to help us with an interview workshop that we will be conducting. So welcome to the show, Elizabeth. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, thank you for having me. My background consists of working for a major network for 30 years. I started as a sales assistant working in sales, and then I went on to working for our sales support teams. We supported our sales executives. They handled all of prime time and sports programming, advertising revenue. And we were handling close to $10 billion of revenue. And 2019 hit, uh, Walt Disney purchased some of the properties and there were major layoffs. I got included in that group. And then COVID hit and I decided to just lay low and see what would be my next step in my career move. And I decided to break into tech sales. Therefore, I went into uh, a fellowship program called SV Academy. And that is where I got my education in regards to business development, lead generation, emotional intelligence, learned all about the tech tools, sales law and included a, an internship that I did for a week with the company and it was solely for instructional purposes. We did our cold calls, we did our research, we did our ICP files, we did all the research, followed the cadence and made the cold calls, made the emails, sent out the emails, the personalized emails. And that was an experience. The big thing for us to focus in on is that you've been in and around the world of sales for a while. You were working for a major network. You started out in the an entry level sales adjacent position. And then you rose up the ranks in, in various positions and then you made the career switch. So when we're thinking about that trajectory, you're not completely foreign to the world of sales. You've either been functioning in some sort of sales support capacity or leading or organizing sales teams, if I understand it correctly, is that accurate? Sales is Sales throughout the years. Sony's changed through technology, through new new views, new the tools, and but it's, it's always been the same to work with the client, to get clients, and to basically make money for the company that you're working with. One thing that I would emphasize as we're going through this workshop, the, the main thing that you need to keep in mind when you're actually going out into the world from a seller's perspective, our number one priority is actually to solve our customers' problems and not right. only first deeply understand the problem and then present solutions. So keep that in mind as you're navigating it. But let's talk a little bit about, you went through this boot camp, that you had a little bit of an internship, then you started the interview process. What sort of challenges have you run up into while you're going through the various uh, interview uh, cycles that you've been on? The biggest challenge has been, I don't have enough of the, as they call it, quantitative data to show how I performed as an SDR or what I produced. We the internship is only, was only for a week and we were just really pretty much basically just following the protocols of calling and it, doing the research. And it was a prospect list of almost 90 prospects where it was already generated for us, but still we had to do this research and do the calls and set up the emails. And it just, we didn't have enough time to really follow through with the process. It's interesting that you're mentioning that the folks that you've interviewed with have cited lack of quantitative data as a reason for not moving forward, which is really odd considering that you're interviewing for basically entry-level roles. I have also been told that the internship was not even a well, that's considered a real experience and which I totally disagree with. That also depends on context. How often have you gotten that feedback on the internship as well as the lack of quantitative data? More on the quantitative da data and a couple of times on the internship. Okay. And this was really, this was just through the recruiters that I've talked to. It seems odd for an entry level role to be requiring hardcore quantitative data, that's still, it's not a showstopper in terms of how to navigate it. So let's talk a little bit about your process before you head into an interview. 
What are the sort of things that you're doing prior to an interview that are designed to get yourself ready? Walk me through your process. Number one, I research the company. I do my best to try to note the major highlights, the ins and outs uh, of the company, what the value proposition of their product is, who are they targeting, and also who just basically just really go into the process of what an SDR is all about, what should their what should be their major strengths, what should figure out what the challenges are for an SDR and try to come up with all those solutions. And basically just run through all those questions of those behavior questions. What are your strengths, weaknesses? Yeah, that's been pretty much my process. Let's break that down a little bit because I think you got a, a pretty solid pre-interview prep process in place. Absolutely research the company and, and particularly I would focus on mission, vision, values first because that explains the why of the company and then you can link that back to what they do. So there's a solid foundation there. I would also add, if you aren't already doing it, you need to make sure that you're researching the people that you're going to be interviewing with. So if, uh, if you have that disclosed ahead of time, you want to spend some time there. I think from the perspective of product and customer, it's also good to have visibility there. So for anybody that is listening, that is doing these sort of things, what you just shared, Elizabeth is actually a solid foundation for the prep work that needs to go in there. I think also the part where you're reviewing some of the behavioral questions uh, before you go into the interview, that's important as well. I think the key thing with that aspect of the interview prep is to understand the framework versus memorizing the actual answer or recommended answer. So if, uh, if you're understanding the key principles, right, yeah. you're in good shape. Those are some really solid best practices, but let's drill into sort of the biggest challenge that you've described in our conversations, which is, Hey, I have a lot of experience in the world of work. I just don't have a lot of experience in the role of an SDR. So how do I bridge that gap in the course of uh, an interview? Give me an example of how that's come up in the, in, in an interview. When, uh, when somebody's asked you to connect those dots, what's been your typical answer or how have you answered that question? Well, I always tie back to my previous work experience and through the experience of the academy. I always make it a point that it has just strengthened. It has, it has just grown my skills as far as for my sales environment skills. I, I just, I, I honestly don't know how else to, to enhance this answer because it's honestly the only answer I have right now. And that's why we're having this conversation because there's a number of different ways that you can connect the dots and it doesn't necessarily have to be tied to the boot camp that you attended or the training that you attended. There's a, a number of different ways that you can approach it. So when you think about the role of an SDR, so this is an entry-level sales position. That person is responsible for heavy outbound outreach by phone and email with the intent of building a relationship quickly and mm -hmm. influencing that relationship to move to a meeting with some other person on the sales team. So when you break down that process, you're looking at a number of things. You're looking at a high volume of outbound activity. You're looking at being able to manage and stay organized across a number of different systems. And you're looking at creating a, a, a process for staying organized on an ongoing basis so you can push enough volume out. What you did in a pre-interview prep position was understanding the day in the life of an SDR. Now you want to take that day in the life description and tie it to what you've done. So you've been associated or sales adjacent in a number of different roles. All you need to do is think about it from the perspective of in the roles that you've had, okay. where you were either leading teams or managing people, what are the relevant or similar activities? You had multiple timelines that you needed to manage in your previous experience. So that is relevant to what an SDR does because you have multiple tasks that need to be executed in a given amount of time with a given level of precision. So think about how that came into play in your role as a sales assistant, in your role as a manager of sales systems, you had multiple people that probably were either directly or indirectly taught into your reporting structure and you had to manage all of their priorities and you had to get them to execute various tasks. That's a project management related activity. Oh. Okay. That ties into what you would be doing as a, as an SDR, because you have all of your contacts that you have listed. You have all of your outreach that you has to have to manage. You have to stay on top of all of the timelines for those follow-ups. That is a project management component 
or function or related activity that you can tie back together. So what right. you're trying to communicate, look, while I haven't done this exact job, I've actually managed multiple competing priorities, stayed organized and driven results in these previous roles by doing these functional tasks or doing these elemental tasks that are associated with it. And that's how you bridge that gap. Yes. Okay. I haven't, I haven't spent weeks, months, years calling people and booking appointments, but what I have done, and this is the pivot, what I have done is managed multiple complex priorities under a given timeline and delivered results. So when you think about what an SDR is responsible for, that's what they're responsible for. Now it's a more basic level, but that's how you bridge that gap of broadening the picture. So there's, that's one way to bridge the gap. Now, what's going to likely happen in your interview is that you're going to get a question that asks you something specific about an SDR's job. Give me an example of blah, blah, blah that you've done. And you're probably not going to know the answer because you've never done the job. So how are you supposed to give an example of something that's come up that you've never done before? Right. So when you encounter those sort of behavioral questions, what you need to think about is how do I get into learning mode? This is a general problem solving question, right? I haven't dealt with that particular challenge before, but in other instances, when I've encountered something that I've never seen before, here's what I've done. So the first thing that I do is I go to Google or research it on my own and see if there's any resources that are publicly available that help answer this question. Then when I find those resources, I'm going to consume that information and try to put it into practice. And then once uh -huh. I put it, once I put it into practice, I'm going to learn some stuff and try to figure out, okay, what worked, what didn't work. And I can apply that in any scenario. So when you tie that back to the question of give me an example of X, the mm -hmm. way that you would answer it is, well, I haven't experienced X directly. But I know that if I do experience this, my process for solving things that I'm unfamiliar with is this, I'm going to research on my own, do my best case to implement what I've learned, examine the outcome of what I just tried, continuously improve what I just executed. And then if I get stuck, I'll relay my findings to my leadership or whoever I report into and get their feedback on what can I be doing better? Here's my checklist of what I've already done. Okay. So. I covered a lot of stuff right there. So what feedback questions or additional detail do you think would be helpful? I'm really trying to work that narrative of the transferable skills, like really into the interview. And I don't know if it's something that I'm really, it's that message I'm not relaying well. Do you think, is that something that has to be really sharp? This is all I have right now as my basis to try to break into this industry or this role. I would argue that you have a lot more. You're evaluating your viability for a position mm -hmm. based on a very narrow set of experiences. So what you have to do is be able to pivot and draw on your broader experience and tell that story. And I think if you're getting hung up on telling the story, you need to practice what that sounds like. So then how does one break into this industry as an SDR, as someone who Let's say as I did, or did, did a boot camp or whatever training and they're trying to break in, but they don't have any experience. So how do you really, how do you really showcase from no skills to some skill because mm -hmm. of, of what you learn? It's almost like a college graduate. It's exactly like a college graduate. Exactly. And so then I've done my best to really narrow, to really search for these companies that are looking for zero to one year, because a lot of these uh, companies are looking for one to three years of experience. I've had recruiters come to me to offer me interviews and I've been on so many interviews and I still cannot make it. I can understand how that would be frustrating. I think from a mindset perspective, you have to orient yourself into what is the customer or potential customer or potential employee evaluating me on. They're evaluating me on a couple of different things. For an SDR role, they're not evaluating you on really your experience. They're evaluating right. you on your aptitude and mm -hmm. your attitude and your learning orientation. Those are the three components that they're checking the box on. Does this person have a learner's mentality? Does this person have a motor or initiative to figure things out? And is this person coachable? That's what you have exactly. to demonstrate 
in the course of the interview, but if you're not practicing answering mm -hmm. to those specific points before the interview, it's always going to have some bumps in the road because your situation is really no different than a college grad who's mm -hmm. trying to break in. What experience do you have being an SDR? I don't right. know, but I, here's what I did do. I, uh, I worked through college. I had a little lawn cutting business. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I focused on in that business was making sure that I understood what the customers wanted in terms of how they wanted their lawns to look. And I would execute to the best of my ability, my understanding of what their requirements are. When I was done, I would ask them for their feedback to see how well I did. And if if I needed to fix things, then I would fix it. And then that's how I demonstrate my ability to do the job. So tie that into an SDR's role. So that's an SDR's role. You take your best shot at understanding what the customers and you tie that into your previous experience. Then you restate your understanding of what the customer is telling you. Hey, I, this is what you said. This is how I understood it. Are we on the same page? Yes. Okay, great. Then I think we might have a solution for you. Let me work on execute, executing this for you. You execute it, then you ask for feedback. That's the loop that you have to demonstrate. And you've like, I can look at your LinkedIn profile and I know that you've done that several times throughout your career, because if you didn't, you wouldn't have progressed. So that's yeah. how, that's how you link it in. And what I would suggest is to get yourself smoother in the delivery of that story or practice in front of a mirror, but you have to work on making that smooth. And then that's what gets you battle ready for these sort of conversations. I don't know if it's the answers they're happy with, or they're looking for something specific or they're evaluating based on uh, the, those handful of attributes. So you have to speak right. to the attributes and understand the core competencies are for the role for an SDR role. It's all about energy, learning, orientation, adaptability, curiosity, curiosity adaptability, Confidence. those sort of things and yeah. demonstrate those sort of things. And then you should be fine. So that's going to take reps. It's going to take practice. But when you're looking at tying in your previous experience to the current role, focus on communicating the big picture. I haven't done that particular task, but I know that the role of an SDR requires this and this. Here are some examples of how I executed on these things in my previous roles and then be able to cite examples. And then you should be in good shape from there. Is that helpful? Very helpful. Thank you. The, uh, the other thing that I would add is when you're going through the interview process at the end of the interview, how do you wrap up your interview with the person that you're talking to? Do the basic questions. I do a question in regards to themselves. I do a question in regards to the company and I do a question in regards to the role itself. Okay. I'm going to make some assumptions here. All three of those are fine. As okay. long as the question is not something that's easily discoverable through research. So don't ask a question that you would know through your research about the company, about the job or about the, the person. But what I would say is replace one of those elements with this question. There's a couple of power questions that you can ask. One would be, let's say that I get hired for this job and a year from now, you're looking at me as your best hire. What are the things that I would have needed to accomplish in that 12 month period? for me to be considered your best hire for this role. And the reason why that question is critical is because it helps you understand what their vision for success is. Mm -hmm. And it also frames out exactly what you need to be able to deliver to if you're actually in the seat. Now, generally speaking, Somebody that is interviewing for this type of role at this level won't ask that question. So that question helps you set yourself apart because it's a visioning question. So add that into your arsenal. Okay. The other thing that I, I, I would consider is, and, and this requires a little bit of courage. Hey, it was great talking to you. I have a good understanding of the role. I have a good understanding of the company. I think you'd be a, a great manager to work for. Thinking about the conversation that we just had, is there anything that came up in the conversation that would prevent me from moving forward in the process? Is there any additional information that you need to feel better about moving me forward in the process? Can I say something? You think yeah. they would be honest in their answer? You have no idea unless you ask. But what it demonstrates, so when we're talking about the sales function, that is a trial closing question. What additional information do you need from me to help you move me forward in the process? Is there any additional information that I could provide that will make your decision easier 
in moving me forward in the process? That is a trial closing question. And when you're thinking about competencies and demonstrating competency and capability, you have to put the other person into a decision mode. Another way that you can actually trial close without it being aggressive, if your style is a little bit more subdued, okay. you can ask a question along the lines of, now that we've had this conversation, I appreciate all the information that you've shared with me. I'm curious, what do you think I could have done better in this conversation to set myself apart as a candidate for this role? So this actually demonstrates two things. It, it, it's again, a trial close, but it's also demonstrating your learning orientation and your aptitude and your curiosity about continuous improvement. Because when you think about what's required for successful salespeople, it is that continuous improvement mentality. So think about adding that. Those are your, your last opportunity to make an impression. Generally speaking, you have to leverage what you have going for you, which is your experience. And the vast majority of people that are interviewing for SDR roles aren't going to have that level of experience. So asking a question or two along those lines are going to actually help you separate and actually it might actually give you more opportunity to have a conversation in the moment when it's actually wrapping up. So think about adding that into your arsenal and, uh, and testing that out in terms of how, moving you forward in the process. Okay. I'm in a much better place. I have to tell you. Elizabeth, th this was a great conversation and I appreciate you sharing your experience and helping the broader audience with potentially solving some of the challenges that they're having. I really appreciate you coming on and being brave and, and, and going through this exercise because I know that it can be uh, pretty difficult. With that being said, I think there's a lot of stuff in your profile that would position you really well. And hopefully this advice helps move the needle in your job search and, and gives you some actionable items to incorporate into your interview process and your job search process. So thanks again for joining us. For those of you who are listening to this episode, we will be available on all your major podcast platforms. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, uh, give us feedback, and hopefully this helps move your careers further faster. And thanks for joining us on Cascading Leadership.